Good evening. I'd like to call to order the meeting for Bedford Township for June 18, 2019. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, could uh, Pastor Greg Withrow come on up with Assembly of Christians and open us up in prayer? Y'all join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we know from your word that all of those who sit in seats of authority are there ordained by you to oversee and watch over for the well-being and welfare of all of those under their watch. To that end, Lord God, I would pray from your word for all of us here today and specifically as well for them, that they would all trust in you, Lord, with all of their heart, that they would lean not under their own understanding that in all their ways they would acknowledge you and you will indeed direct their path. Teach them not to be wise in their own eyes and to learn to depart from evil and it will be health to their bodies and helpful to all of us in this community, Lord God. We do pray for them each and every day as we should and as you have commanded us, Lord. May you be honored and glorified by all of those uh, on this board as they make decisions uh, in your sight, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. <clears throat> Item two, uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, I'd like to add uh, another document for the Lewis Avenue streetscape uh, and add it with 8E. It's on your desk. What letter are you going to go, Paul? It'll go with 8E. Oh, with 8E. Okay. And then just a quick question, Mr. Peroni, um, what number we got here? Seven B, you're just gonna leave it on for discussion still or is that coming off completely or? Um, I mean, it was supposed to come back. When right. We're ready for it to be back. So the packet said you didn't have the information, so should we yeah. just? And we can still discuss it. Yeah, it's on for discussion okay. and I no. don't, any reason to pull yeah, it? I, I have some discussion. Okay, leave it on there. I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended by adding uh, in additional information to item 8E. Support. Okay, motion supported by <coughs> Mr. Clements. Discussion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Clements? Aye. Mr. Montra is absent. Mr. Francis? Aye. Ms. Tinnevery? Aye. Mr. Berger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. And the motion passed 7 0. One second. I'll put my paper in here. Okay. Item 3 the consent agenda. The agenda committee recommends to approve and place on file the minutes of June 4, 2019, regular meeting of the Bedford Township Board. B. Accept and place on file the general savings, pooled funds, and CD reports from the treasurer. C. Approve and place on file the Revenue expense report and balance sheet for the period ending May 31st, 2019. D, appoint Thomas Martin Jr. to the Fire Board of Appeals for a first term ending 6-30-2021. Move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Motion is supported by Mr. Steiner. Discussion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Ms. Tinnevery? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni. Aye. And the motion is 7 0. Item 4, presentations. We have none. Hmm? Oh, 6 0. Thank you, DC. <laughs> I just got picked that up. I only have 6 here tonight. So, right? Here's Count. Yeah. Okay, item 5, public comment. Comments limited to 2 minutes for board agenda items only. Good evening, Logan Tisdale, 1308 Brandywine Street. This is in regards to uh, item number 7A and 7B. Uh, I hope this board approves the uh, employment agreement for Chief Massingale. He certainly has been an asset to this community. Uh, one of the things I noticed about he's here at every meeting, which is commendable, and so I hope this board passes that. Also, uh, in regards to the township hours, I hope the board passes uh, uh, limited hours on Friday for the township uh, employees. I think that's a small favor we can do for them. They're not represented by any major um, uh, 
union or anything like that, uh, basically you represent them, so I would hope that maybe you'd give that some consideration <laughs> since there's not many more weeks left uh, until the uh, uh, Labor Day anyway, so I would hope that that gets passed. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any more comments? Okay, seeing none, moving on to staff report 6A, request of approval of a resolution amending the 2018-2019 general fund budget. Mr. Manning, come on up. Good evening. The budget is being adjusted to reflect what the year end is projected to be. <clears throat> Dave, pull the mic here a little closer to your face, please. Thank you. Property taxes and collection fees have been adjusted to actual, along with other items in the revenue area. <clears throat> Passport fees continue to increase. Cemetery lot sales have increased also this fiscal year. Assessment revenue for ordinance was not budgeted, and a budget increase of nine thousand dollars would be required. Excuse me for my voice. Supervisors area, we had to increase the budget because the original budget was a little short. Uh, finance had to increase this by $700 for a FASB report. <laughs> That's required by the state of Michigan. Clerk board meeting minutes continue to increase and that's gonna increase $1,700. In the election area, new laptops are going to be required for the upcoming elections. And it's estimated the total will cost around $15,000. We'd like to purchase them this fiscal year so we can get them set up with the necessary software on them and make sure they're all functional. Building and grounds had to increase the uh, seasonal wages by $8,000 and the uh, repair on the maintenance building has been increased. Insurance is gonna cover majority of the repairs on this building. Building inspection costs, we had to pay uh, for an engineering study on the new Bridgeport Church of roughly $10,000. The uh, church will be reimbursing the township for these funds. Street light, I increased this by $15,000. However, after this was re repaired, we got our last bill in, and the bill's been running about $15,000 a month. The last bill is for $400, so the adjustment was not needed. But at the time, I wasn't aware. So. <coughs> Community action. The board approved uh, having an officer at the schools for public safety. And this is, cost is going to be shared by the schools and the township. And the budget adjustment should have been made prior to the board approving this. I talked to our auditors. Anytime the board approves expenditure funds, the budget should be amended prior to that approval. So, learn, live and learn. And that being <laughs> same thing for the uh, property that's purchased for the roundabout. Okay, questions for Mr. Manning? 
Barry? I don't really have any questions. I've already called Mr. Manning and we'll discuss quite a bit of this. Um, and I have notes here, but after that uh, wonderful opening prayer, I can't hardly even say what I have written here, so thank you for that. <laughs> Save me from, uh, so I'll happen to confess later on. So um, w what I think is important to say is that um, as a trustee, I am very unhappy that we're approving $208,900 in adjustments. We have two weeks left in our fiscal year, and we, we, we shouldn't be having to adjust the budget by $208,900. I'm including myself in this. This board is responsible to do just exactly what Mr. Manning said in his last statement. We are to be making budget adjustments before we approve spending of many of these items. We are to have it in the budget before the check is sent. That's just the law. I know we're not going to be thrown in jail. I'm just as guilty as everyone else here. But I'm going to tell you that we can do better. We need to work better at making sure we amend the budget for something that we want to purchase or some change we want to make before we uh, approve the spending. Um, I, I guess this is my, my thought. And again, I'm going to include myself. I'm going to do, try to do better this last year of our, this board's tenure. But we have no, we give no incentive to our employees or to us to stay within the budget and there are no consequences for going outside the budget. It's just irresponsible in my opinion. And again, I include myself in there. I'm hoping that everyone will work with me. I mean, not work with me, but we'll, we'll all work together to try and do better in this regard. It's just not responsible to the public in terms of the way we we spend their money. Thanks. That's it. Okay. Any more comments? Questions? Concerns? <coughs> Mr. Well, Francis? I agree with Nancy on that, that we should endeavor to uh, reduce these budget adjustments and do them in the right order, as she mentioned. Sometimes it's difficult to do, and that's where I am conflicted with that law that says you have to amend the budget before the board acts on it. I, I you know, and what does the board say when you're amending the budget and haven't acted on it yet? Well, what are you doing this for? It's kind of the cart before the horse in certain circumstances. We can work through that, though, and, and uh, comply with the intent of that statute. I think we should. Mr. Steiner? Um, David, do you have a regular schedule that you by any chance set, say, quarterly budget reviews for internal within the I try day. to look at it on a monthly basis. Okay, but I'm, I'm talking about maybe a review with with the, the full-timers, maybe a quarterly review with the full-timers that if you did that, maybe we, you know, we could get these things put into place. You know, we wouldn't have this, you know, long, uh, large number, you know, at the last minute if we did quarterly reviews. And I mean, granted, you're doing monthly as the, as the finance right. director, but to sit down with the full timers and do that quarterly. And, and when I say full timers, I, that includes the department heads as well, not just, you know, right. uh, supervisor, clerk, right. and treasurer. I think it think it'd be something good to get on a regular schedule. Yeah. Well, two of the big adjustments was for the property, right, and for the uh, police officers. 65 and 25, respectively. Yeah, that's almost half of it. So. Right. Okay. So. Okay. okay. Seeing now, I look for a motion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I 
move that this board uh, accept and approve the resolution to amend the 2018-2019 general fund budget as presented. Ms. Tenever? I will support that since we have to pay our bills. Okay. Motion is supported by Ms. Tenever. Discussion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Francis? Aye. Ms. Tenever? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. The motion passed 6 0. Item 6B request for approval of a resolution amending the 2018 19 special revenue funds. Mr. Manning? <clears throat> All right, fire district fund that revenue is being adjusted. The federal grant receipt timing is off, so that it's going to decrease. Uh, <coughs> miscellaneous revenue, that's where we're capturing <coughs> the revenue coming in for the ambulance runs, so that's increasing. Projected expenditures. Are Projected to $37,800. Part of this is for life insurance, medical supplies. Firefighter physicals are going down, decrease. <coughs> uh, police fund revenue for property taxes <coughs> is not going to meet the budget, so that's decreased $8,000. Fuel costs are going up, and that's been reflected in several areas. Sale of, for the park, sale of the property, revenue has increased $37,000, and uh, expenses are going up likewise. The fire equipment, the new millage that was passed, the projected revenue will not is overstated, and that's going to be decreased $24,000. SADs have been adjusted to reflect <laughs> what the actions are going to be. Also, on the resolution, page 2, the rehabilitation fund at $60,000 needs to be changed to $5,930. And the expenditures changed to four hundred dollars. Thank you, Mr. Steiner, for catching that mistake. Okay. Could you repeat and that? The, Could you repeat that number, please? Fifty-nine. Revenue. Yeah. Changed to five thousand nine hundred thirty dollars. Five thousand nine hundred thirty. Rather than the sixty thousand. Okay, got it. Thank you. Dave, is uh, the Metro Act fund taken into consideration if we approve the TAP grant amount of 23000 tonight? So we just keep that in mind. Is that where, where we'd probably end up pulling that out of if that's approved? Okay. And the expenditures, Nancy, are $400. Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Senator, for catching up. Comments or questions? Mr. I'd like to, I'd like to find out about what this whole Metro Act fund. This does not show that there's twenty three thousand in there. So, does it have to be Is approved that, tonight? We Can't we do it under the new fiscal year? That's the account we were talking about pulling it out of, right? Correct. Yes. You said there's one hundred eighty seven thousand in there, Dave, or something like that. Yes, in the balance sheet area. Right. Okay. The budget only shows the revenue and the expenses. It doesn't show the assets and the Metro fund. In the uh, May 31st statement that you all have in your packet shows, <coughs> excuse me, total assets, which are cash and, and investments of $186,124.35. So that's like the fund balance of the Metro Act fund. Right. It's money that we okay. have collected over the years and haven't used up for projects that qualify for using of Metro funds. And when we talked about <clears throat> how do we come up with our match for that TAP fund, that money uh, fits right into what Metro Act monies are supposed to be spent on. <clears throat> but it hasn't been budgeted yet. And I think we have to budget it as an expenditure. So. Yes, we would. Mm -hmm. I would think. 
Well, that'll end up being the full amount of the, the match, right? I mean, it'd be roughly a hundred and thirty something thousand total, right? Right. <clears throat> Were you going to spend that this current fiscal year, or next fiscal year? No, it'll be it'll be this year, right, Mr. Ma Mr. Bushman? No, I think it'll be. I no, I'm right. saying next fiscal year. I'm sorry, yeah, because yeah. it'll be the summer when the jobs mean it's being bid out right now. Oh, so it's not going to happen this current fiscal year. No. Mm -hmm. But I think that would be the process to do it. Once we know what that is, you amend the budget to cover it, and then you right. approve the expenditure, and we're good. Right. Yeah. Any oh. more questions, comments? Seeing none, I look. I, Mr. I just have a comment, and then I'll make the motion. But um, just for clarity, for you know, people who are wondering about the other budget, this is special revenue, which all the money either comes in through a millage that the public has passed right. or special assessments that the districts, the subdivisions or whatever have passed right. and approved. So th these are monies that as, are not in the general fund and the board doesn't right. generate them. I'd like to move that we um, approve the 2018-2019 um, special revenue funds uh, budget Amendments as presented. Support. Motion supported by Mr. Clemens. Discussion. I just want to thank Greg for coming and praying tonight. That was that was really smooth. That was. Yeah, you changed me. September, that was nothing to it. Amen, yeah. brother. <laughs> Could you call the roll, please? Ms. Tinnerberry. Aye. Mr. Clemens. Aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Francis. Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni. Aye. And the motion passed six zero. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Request for approval of the amended general fund appropriations resolution for fiscal year 2019-2020. Mr. Manning. After several people looked at all the numbers in the upcoming budget year, one item, one line item was missed. And Mr. Montre brought that to our attention at the last board meeting. So that has been corrected. I didn't print out the whole new set of numbers. I didn't think that was necessary. So. OK, any questions or comments? Seeing none, I look for a motion. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept and approve the uh, general fund appropriation resolutions for Fiscal 2019-2020 as presented. Second. Okay, motion is supported by Mr. Steinman, Steiner. Discussion? None. Call the roll, please. Mr. Francis? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Ms. Tinnaberry? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye, and the motion passed 6-0. Item 6-D, request for approval of a resolution to establish a capital improvement fund. Mr. Manning? What you have before you is a, a new resolution to establish setting aside dollars for building and equipment purchases, upgrades, improvements. Just so everybody knows, it's for the building. This building, we're looking to plan ahead right. for new roofs, air, whatever, carpet. So we're setting aside money every year. And then as far as equipment goes for maintenance, we're going to eventually need some dump trucks and different stuff to upgrade. The equipment's getting old, so we're just setting money aside because those are big expenditures. So. And during the uh, meeting of the whole for the budget, the it was approved, well, it was suggested. We set aside $50,000 for the building and $25,000 for equipment. These funds will be captured in on the balance sheet in the it'd be a restricted fund for the purpose of building and equipment and each <clears throat> excuse me each year the board's going to have to approve if they want to do this again or not and this can fund can be re <coughs> dissolved by any future board coming up 
and uh, <clears throat> we're going to do that. I think we need to come up with a five-year plan so that we can plan out what expenditures we anticipate so we can set the money aside rather than waiting until it happens. So it's a five-year rolling plan. Ms. Denbury? Mr. Manning's exactly right. To have a capital improvement fund established is nothing if you don't have a written capital improvement fund. You just mentioned what what's being planned for, but that's not enough. It can't be a verbal, we're going to spend it on this, that, and the other thing. It has to be in writing. It has to be a capital improvement plan in writing. Okay, we've gone over it with the building department. I mean, we could submit it to the board and put it with the peg. How do you want it? You want it put in the clerk's department or? Well, I don't care where it's put. I mean, it has to be something in writing, signed by the supervisor and clerk. Not determined by the building department, but determined no, I mean, by the board. No, I mean, we just went over it with a few people as far as professionals to look at the building, the age, and what needs to be done. And we figured a good amount to just have would be roughly 125000 eventually, you know, because as of right now, you know, the roof, you know, has about 15 years left. You know, and we were just, you know, we figured that was, a, I think, a $60,000 fix or something like that. or. But. I get what you're saying. We'll put together generally, a plan. Generally, a capital improvement plan that accompanies the funds, has it's an ongoing thing. Once you put the roof on, you continue to put money aside because then you need the parking lot done, you need painting in the building. You, need, you know, I mean, improvements go on just like in your home. And so it facilities. But you need it in writing. You can't just say it. Someday you won't be here, and then the next person won't know what you said. Mr. Francis. She's right. I hate to say that, but you're right. Nancy. No, <laughs> no we, we've talked before, and my view on a capital improvement fund is it's really a, a five to ten year forecast. What are the large needs, large ticket item needs? Not stuff with just expense because it happens every year. <clears throat> this is a five to ten year plan. Right. We sit on and we reduce it to writing on a piece of paper. Right. It adds up to whatever that adds up. And if it's a 10-year plan, you might want to finance that over 10 years. So you say, okay, mm -hmm. divide it by 10, and that's the amount that the general fund would be putting away every year, or at least that's the theory behind it. So this is a, a work in process at this point. We've started it off with, with these amounts. And, uh, you know, when we budget for the next year, we'll need to talk about that again. Right. Yeah. And we're, all this does is restrict <clears throat> the part of the existing fund balance. Right. And, and, we're and every year from now on, we'll be putting new money into actually writing a check, putting in a separate account. We did that when we built, before we built this building. We had a million dollars that we had squirreled away over the years and borrowed another two to build a $3 million facility. And that's, in effect, is the same theory that we're talking about here. Exactly. You plan ahead. <laughs> Can I just mention that's one thing? <clears throat> After this is established, and you want to go out and spend those dollars, then it becomes a budget item. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a great point. Okay, hey, could you call the roll, please? I need a motion. Uh, get, what's that? <laughs> I need a motion. Okay, I look for a motion. I move that we um, approve the resolution to establish capital improvement fund as presented. Support. Okay, motion is supported. Uh, discussion? The point was is to get it started, to get money in there, to make a point, to put money in there, because we talk about it every year, but nothing happens. So we actually are putting money in, and now we're going to come up with a plan. We know the money eventually needs to be at a certain point, and we know we have to put together a plan, but the point was to get this done. So, and that's what we've done. So, okay. Could you call the roll, please? Ms. Tinneberry? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni. Aye. And the motion passed 6 0. Item 7A request for approval of a, an employment agreement for Adam Massengill, uh, Township Fire Chief. Chief, you want to come on up? We kind of worked on this um, for the past couple months with uh, uh, legal Phil Nance. He wrote it. Um, we let everybody know if you have any questions or, or comments or anything about it to shoot them in. I uh, didn't want to spend 
five hundred dollars for Phil to come here. So this is basically an agreement that protects both parties, but it also gives him some comfort to know that um, you know another board just can't just get rid of them willy nilly. They can, you know, that we have a contract here, and you know there will be. <laughs> actions if we do if they do you know so it's set up to protect him a little bit too who would ever want to get rid of <laughs> you'd be surprised I suppose. mr steiner <laughs> um i'd i'd like to say that you know that the drafting of this document it's very straightforward very simple to read it's not filled with a bunch of legalese um, no offense to the attorneys, but we know how they can get pretty wordy. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, I did talk briefly, you know, with Chief uh, a little bit about this after I first read it, and um, that was after I had just perused it, but then I went back and I read it, you know, in more detail. Um, the one thing I, I noticed here, and I, I missed it first, is talking about 180 hours during a pay period, and I'm like, 180 hours, how is he going to accomplish that? I went back and read and said, okay, it's special assignment exception. So in other words, if you know, if you got sent on a FEMA detail or something like that, that, that makes sense. Um, I mean, I really, I read it three different times, and I really can't find much of anything to pick apart in here. As I said, it's very straightforward. Uh, it protects the township. It protects the chief. Um, I don't need to say any more, Chief, of, of what I feel that you've done for the township and for the department, along with your team and the dedication that they brought forward. So um, I, I'm glad this is in place, and hopefully that uh, once the date on this is done, that it gets another nice extension. Okay. Any more comments, questions? I have a question. Francis? <coughs> of the Chief. Are you happy with this wording of the contract? Uh, absolutely. If the board's comfortable and happy with it, I'm certainly happy and I'm very appreciative for the opportunity to, to stay around for a while. As am I, because I, we don't want to lose you. You've done so well since the short time that you've been here that I really think it has strengthened the department and benefit the residents immensely, and I'm glad you're here. Mr. Steiner? Just one more quick thing to add, and I'm going to say, and again, I will, I will pin most of this one on the chief. Granted, he's got a lot of great help within the department, but yes, he does. it takes a good leader. And to Nancy's point about what the township needs to do with the capital improvement plan, that's exactly what the chief has done within the department when it comes to looking at buildings and structures, but mainly focusing on what kind of equipment and needs this department needs for the future. I mean, we've got new ambulances. Um, we've got a new ladder truck coming. Um, there's a lot of, lot of things out there that have been very positive, and it's all part of a capital improvement plan that never would have happened without uh, the good work that you've done. Okay. With that said, I'm going to make the motion that we accept and approve the employment agreement between Bedford Township and Chief Adam Massengill as presented. Support. support. Okay. Motion to support of Mr. Francis. Discussion, Ms. Tinneberry? Yeah, I'd like a friendly amendment that, um, never mind. Okay. Any more discussion? I made a mistake. Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Ms. Tinneberry? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni. Aye. The motion passed 6 0. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Hey, item 7B discussion of the township summer hours, including Friday, July 5th, 2019. Well, that's why we needed to keep it on right there. July 5th. Um, so we did uh, the survey and we added up all the, uh, the time and we, we looked at it again. We thought we needed to add another week or two to it to really give it, um, you know, as far as what's happening Friday compared to Monday. Um, I did put the, uh, a letter to the editor out in the newspapers that encouraged people to call the township, call me, and I left my email and stuff. Um, he had somebody in the office today. I've taken, I think, a couple messages, but nothing really major. Um, 
So um, we did want to the we did want to talk about July fifth. Um, we are off July fourth. It's a Thursday. July fifth is a Friday. So I thought I'd put that on for discussion as well. So any comments or questions, Ms. Tinnerberry? First, um, wh whose document is this? Because it doesn't have any heading. It could have come from somebody off the street. It just says more time is needed to gather pertinent information. Is it? We just wanted something in there, so we just put this. Oh, OK. Just so there was something in here rather okay. than just giving it a title and okay. not well, having anything I, I in was there. told a while ago if I ever wanted anything on the agenda, I had to put it in writing with my name. So just, just commenting. Um, OK, I, I brought with me tonight the personnel manual because each employee is supposed to sign the, the personnel manual have a copy and sign, and the hours of work, the holidays are all leaves, vacations, they're all listed in here. And so um, when any employee signs it, they know what days are off. If a holiday falls on a Saturday, they get Friday off. If a holiday falls on Monday, or Sunday, they get Monday off. <clears throat> so it's not as though they aren't adequately taken care of in terms of time off. They can have up to five weeks vacation. We already give them 15 paid holidays. Um, so to make it seem like situation ethics, which means the situation determines the ethics, how we should act. Just the fact that a holiday falls on a Thursday and employees have to come back to work for one more day before they get the weekend off, to me is not justification for every time a holiday falls on a Thursday. We're at the, we've, we've been here before. Um, and I just am not approving of that kind of decision making because, again, we have a personnel policy. We just recently approved the personnel policy. If this is something that the employees or the full-time officials wanted, it should have been discussed then before we approved a new personnel policy. Um, I think I, I received an email from a resident that said I should be willing to give the employees time off, me time. Well, like I said, 15 paid holidays, up to five weeks vacation, 25 days there, um, I, I, think, I, I think is adequate me time. I've talked to people who work in the medical, in, medical field. They get no, no vacation time, no, or, um, no designated vacation time, no designated holidays. Um, they, they have to take, they get so many days, maybe, I don't know, four or five weeks, but then they have to take those based on when they want them, not, not, they don't get the holidays off. So if they want Christmas off, they have to take that as a vacation day. I, I just think that um, government employees tend to want things differently than people who work in the real world. I'm not saying that this isn't a tough job. I'm not saying they don't do a good job. Anytime I speak about um, these kinds of rules, I'm, you know, classified as someone who doesn't like the employees, but it has nothing to do with it. I'm a, I'm a rule follower. I'm a rule person. And um, I just believe that once we set down certain rules, we need to stand by them instead of changing them every time something different comes up. Uh, my other comment is that this, I've heard from discussion from last week that the public wants the hours changed. Well, the public, my generation public, doesn't get on Facebook, they don't have Snapchat, they don't do that social media and I, I haven't talked to any of, of my generation that is interested in changing the hours or evening hours um, they wouldn't come in the evening 
they, they adjust their, their schedules. Um, so if this came from the public as a widespread request that we change, you know, have Friday afternoon off and, and um, have evening hours, I, I would have looked at it a little bit differently, but it has not come from the public. And I don't think you mentioned, uh, Mr. Supervisor, last week, 700 people, you know, commented on Facebook. Not, com with, not commented. Okay. It's a poll. Okay. Where if they, they 500 of them click to say they don't care about the hour change, okay. the original one, and then 80 said they wanted a later day. Okay. 20 said they don't want it changed. Okay. And then another 30 said they don't, so 50. Thank you for that clarification. Well, I'll just make sure we're clear. Yeah. Um, but that 30,000 is the population. I even hear 35,000 sometimes, but I haven't seen the census yet. So um, I, Bedford has survived these hours. This personnel policy began in the 90s, and uh, it's pretty much all of that has kind of stayed the same. Um, and the, what I, the other thing I've heard is that there's so many other options to be able to, you don't have to have foot traffic to um, to work here. You have to, there's a lot of other things that need to be done. And as I mentioned last time, we've hired new employees so that departments can get their work done. Um, and now we want time off. So it, it, the two don't, just don't go together um, for me. So um, I guess, and I'm not against closing for one day just because the 4th of July falls on Thursday. Um, um, did I one more thing? Oh, I, I, I just, never mind. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. That was Greg again, wasn't it? Yep, I knew it. <laughs> Good. Stay there, Greg. <laughs> okay, any more comments or discussion? Um, some of the employees were asking if Friday, July 5th would be closed. And I said we would bring it up to the board to see if the board is willing to do that. In return, I said, would you be willing to give up a vacation or personnel time to do that? And not one employee said no. They all agreed that if we decided to close on the 5th, that they would be willing to give up a personnel day or a vacation day to be able to do that. So Just you're saying they would have to use one of their already paid days. Okay. Yes. That's, that is more amenable to me. Yes. Mr. Steiner. And, you know, and, and to Nancy's point, that also look at it the other way. If the holiday was on Tuesday, do we say, okay, then now let's do it every Monday as well? So um, I myself, um, I, I'm off that day, but only because I'm taking a vacation day. Um, you know, and that's not public sector. That's you know, private slash publicly traded, but um, still not a public service job. Um, I, I do think that, um, as Nancy said, me time, I think that we do give some pretty good me time uh, within our benefits package. So uh, I would agree that I think that we probably shouldn't go that route. Now, with what Trudy just said up front, or actually after Nancy, that, again, that could be more amenable that if, if everybody in the township has a vacation day available, then it might be amenable to make that decision. It's either that or they would have to take it with no pay that day. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. Correct. Any more comments, questions, thoughts? Well, we're not voting tonight, right? If we want, if the July we make a decision tonight, just on the July fifth day, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, but not the other. not the summer hours. Okay. No, I don't. I don't think we have enough. Well, I have enough, but maybe you don't. Okay. Oh. You had enough before we had anything. Mr. Chairman, I move that if we're ready for a motion. No, go ahead. <clears throat> I move that we approve the closing of the office on. Friday, July 5th, with the proviso that employees would need to use either a vacation or a personal day for that day off. But the office would be closed. No support. Motion in support of Mr. Clements. Discussion? Ms. Tinnevery? 
I would just like to include a friendly amendment that this is publicized widely, not just through Facebook, but the web page and in the paper even. And I mean, I don't care if we have to pay for it in the paper. I just think that people should know. I, I would hate to think that somebody would come over here on a Friday because they have time off, like, like Rick was saying, and then find out that they've wasted a trip. So I would like it publicized if, if Mr. France is willing to accept that. Publicized. Well, I think I don't know if we needed a, a. I have no problem with that, but I just don't think it's needed. We ought to do that anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, that's fine. It ought to be a routine yeah. thing. Oh, well. We announce it as often as we can. Like we, it, we like are it, here to serve the public. Like, you know, like, like, <laughs> like it or not, Nancy, Facebook is where people get their information for the most part nowadays. Not my age. <laughs> you don't you'd know. Be you'd you be surprised. Know. You don't know. You'd be surprised. <laughs> You're on Facebook. What are you talking about? I'm not on Facebook. Yes, you are. <laughs> I am not. I, I don't, I'm not Okay. On All right, moving on. So discuss it. Call the roll, please. Mr. Francis? Aye. Mr. Clements? Aye. Ms. Tinnevery? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. And the motion passed 6-0. Uh, <clears throat> item 8A, request for approval of vouchers for payment. I'd like to make a motion that the following vouchers be approved for payment. General Fund, $45,669.73. Fire District Fund, $35,356.35. Police Fund, $1,522.16. Park Operating Fund, $7,638.99. Fire Equipment, $11,254.28. Library Operating Fund, $1,050.50. Giant Oaks SAD, $17,455. Wild Haven SAD, $5,292. Chapel Creek SAD, $12,100. Indian Acres SAD, $12,500. Sandy Well SAD, $25,000. Mohawk Trail SAD, $86,500. Fairfield Debt Drive Debt Service, $40. Downtown Development Authority, $153.04. Sewer O&M Fund, $2,193.33. Trust and Agency Fund, $25,283. For a grand total of $289,008.38. Support. Motion is supported by Mr. Francis. Discussion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Ms. Tinnevery? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. The motion passed 6 0. <laughs> Item 8B, request for approval to switch to the Empower program with Burnham and Flower Insurance Group. Come on up. Good evening. How you doing? Good. Thank you, you for being here. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, in the package you received, uh, first of all, I'm Jeff Carlos with uh, Burnham Flower Insurance Group, and we um, <clears throat> manage the uh, pension accounts for uh, the township. Uh, as you saw in the packet, Burnham Flower has been around since 1966. We work exclusively with uh, government agencies, police, fire, pension funds, uh, officials and employees across the state of Michigan, and we also cover Ohio and Illinois and Indiana. Um, I'm a local rep here on the east side out of Macomb County. I've been servicing the account for a couple years. And um, since Paul's team came on board, we've had the opportunity to kind of dig a little deeper into the plan. And um, we've been able to um, basically take the plan out within our own organization and uh, reduce some costs. In addition to that, currently the plan is set up with a separate 457 plan through VOYA and a separate one through John Hancock. So there's two different plans, two different statements. By looking at the Empower program, uh, we're able to combine it under one umbrella, one statement, and reduce the fees considerably. So that's what uh, was presented to you in the, uh, the packet there as well. Uh, in addition to that, Empower is a very large company, uh, Great West, and uh, they have a second to none website use for employees. They increase participation. Um, a little bit about them is their, uh, their largest uh, client is uh, Apple. So when they develop their apps for your iPhone, Android, uh, tablet, uh, people on the Apple board were involved in that. So very user friendly. 
um, and it improves analytics for the township, the supervi the uh, sponsors to be able to kind of dive into the plan deeper and um, help the health of the plan itself and really get, get the employees to retire. That's what the goal is. Um, if you look in the packet, um, the one main piece was the comparison. And the biggest uh, point uh, <coughs> on the bottom would be if you look at combining the plan, we're able to save some record keeping fees. Advisor comp came down some, and we're actually adding a little bit better fiduciary support uh, to protect the board as well. So on average, the plan and the John Hancock saved a minimum of 0.28 up to 0.73. And on the VOIA plan, the minimum savings would be 0.6 uh, to a max of about over 1% savings. So uh, on the right-hand side of that uh, sheet shows you the, the, the range of uh, fees. And uh, usually a question will come around, well, why is there a range? Because of the, the actual fund expense that we do choose on the platform, that's where the fund expense will change. Depending if it's a managed fund, a fixed account fund, uh, an index fund, those will vary. So uh, with the information provided, um, again, I, I had a nice uh, overview with, with Paul and Al and the team, and um, we had our Empower rep in as well, went through a PowerPoint presentation, and decided that it looks like something we should move forward with. And just so the board knows, the question was asked, why do we need Burnham and Flower? Why can't we just go right to Empower? And Power was there. They they won't come to us without right. Burnham and Flower. So. Yeah. And we've had a long-standing relationship. <clears throat> and again, just we come on site. We meet with employees individually. Um, I've had a habit now of starting to go to the actual, uh, you know, the fire station. Uh, met with Adam and his team over there last year. And it's nice to do stuff on site than trying to have them come here to the township. So we'll continue to do that as well, as well as any education programs. We do offer Social Security workshops. Uh, we offer, um, you know, basic financial planning workshops. So that's all available, and uh, we, could, we could continue to do that. Okay. Comments or questions? Mr. Francis? <clears throat> what's, in a nutshell, what's the process for uh, employees that have funds in these accounts to actually make the change? They need to close out on one and get into the other. There's, right? yeah, there's a full. And that's what you'll cover in the meeting yeah, with them? Yeah. Okay. There's a full transition, I, I, good point, there's a full transition team. Uh, we've just worked on this with the uh, Genesee County 911 dispatch group and several others we're working on. There's a transition team, it's about a 90 day process. Uh, communication directly with the plan sponsors, um, reviewing the actual current document now, mapping the funds over, and then absolutely when we, we sit down individual meetings and we show the mapping, what came over, like fund to like fund for them. Okay. And there's actually more funds available. There's 15,000 funds in the brochure. You can see there's a lot of different key named uh, companies in there. Ms. Tenenberg? How did this come about? During our, during our plan reviews, um, we generally will discuss what we currently have in place, and then um, again, Paul is has been real progressive of you know, hey, what's that, what else is out there? How are the fees, and how can we look at saving really the, the township and the employees some money? So you've been around, you said, for quite a while. Yeah, Burnham Flowers been in the. So how come you the, didn't bring this up quite a while ago? Well, the current system is not totally broke. I mean, it's, both are good plans. It's just the industry's changed in the last two years. A lot of fund fees have come down. The Department of Labor's got involved. And there's been a lot of changes in the industry, so it's relatively new. Relatively new, but two years ago you could have brought it. Um, well, D DOLs come aboard, but it's it's a long process to get things changed. Okay, okay. Um, are there transition fees? No, there's no cost to move them. Um, the uh, in, in addition to that, if there is um, falling out there's no contract these these yeah, yeah these fees are set for five years the fund fees could change a bit depending on the managed funds but uh, yeah if something happened you're not stuck you could certainly bring another provider so you, this happened during the plan review did you look at other companies besides Burnham and Flower yeah I've talked to MERS and I emailed each trustee earlier today their plan that they you know had given us the one that you guys had saw as well, you know, I mean, there's, you know, as far as Burnham and Flower goes, their fees are pretty close to theirs now. But before before this, I mean, they were, 
you know, a percent difference. And that's kind of what, you know, at MTA, I had talked to MERS a, a couple different times, and Erie Township uses MERS, and I said that in an email. Um, you know, and I, I basically told you guys, look at the packet. You know, if you wanted to call John Wall with MERS and talk to him about it, you know, feel free. Call Erie if you want to do that. But as a full-time team in here, looking at it with Mr. Manning and Al, and we just, you know, thought it was best for us to stick with what we have and move to the Empower plan. But if you guys think that it's something that we want to hear a presentation on and move forward, you know, it's we can look at that as well. But we feel it's in our best interest right now to, to stick with what we have and move forward with the Empower plan. Uh, if you want to explain <clears throat> kind of what Paul was telling me about as far as having more uh, investable, you know, stocks to, you know, options to be able to invest in or whatever, that was part of the problem. Well, yeah, both both plans have a large platform. Um, Empower actually does have, it, and Paul had mentioned to a couple people that if you want a more of a managed account, like, instead of paying a separate advisor to help you on the account itself, you can actually have managed funds within the account itself. And uh, there's some options for that as well. But the platform is, um, is second to none as far as I'm concerned. They've got uh, you know, all your equipment funds, fidelities. I mean, they're all available there in the platform depending on what we decide to map over and use. Well, I mean, I, most people, I mean, I, we've had investments for a long time. And we don't know one from another, right. so most people don't. I'm not. I'm not advocating that, you know, the people could do better. Yeah. I just, um, truthfully, I I think uh, Burnham and Flowers is uh, one huge, large conglomerate that um, kind of puts the smaller guy out. So that's just my opinion. My opinion. So, um, but I'm I'm all for doing what's best for our employees. Any more comments, questions? Keep in mind the fact that they are bigger is probably part of the reason they can keep their percentages down, too. But. We, we do. We've been part of the Michigan Township Association for quite some time. We do property oh, casualty and employee benefits and um, we'll try to be on site as well uh, for the service side of it as well. Okay. I saw the PowerPoint that they presented. I was in that meeting. and. I think the employees are going to like this. It gave them a lot more options, um, a lot more help if they want it, and it looked pretty easy to get through. And they can do things online now. They don't have to worry about a paper copy and faxing it and getting it in. They can do everything themselves, which will take out a lot of errors, too, in that sense. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent point. I had a note for that as well. Um, the onboarding process we currently have is a lot of paper, a little antiquated. Some things can fall through the cracks, and this is uh, onboarding. Is you can you can actually sign up a new employee within two, one and a half to two minutes, all available. But paper still is available for the mm. uh, various generation that may want paper. We can do that as well. So, <laughs> but uh, the use, user no friendly. No Facebook, all paper, no <coughs> online. Yep, yep, user Your friendly, very nice. The repetition procedure. <laughs> <laughs> she can use electronic signature. I love it. Yeah, that's a polite way to tell her. We're, we're a fossil, right? Yeah, all right. I don't care. <laughs> look at this is. I just looked her up on Facebook. She's right there on Facebook. I, I don't understand I, it. I'm not on Facebook. I had a Facebook account. If it were diverted, you need to here. delete it because you're still on I, there. I deleted it. Well, yeah, that's Facebook. You can't get off. You of can't that. delete them. Can't delete yeah. it. Yeah, yeah they're dead. criminals. Okay, so I look for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the switch to the Empower program through Burnham and Flowers as presented. I'll support. Motion is support over to Mr. Peroni. Discussion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Francis? Aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. Ms. Tineberry? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. And the motion passed 6 0. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, item 8C request for approval to purchase 17 laptop computers to be used for the township election. <clears throat> Ms. Hirschberger? 
Now that the budget is approved with the change, <laughs> these are the three quotes that I received. Um, I had IT right come in and look at our laptops because the state is forcing us to go to Windows 10. The laptops I have are the ones that were provided by the state many years ago and they are Windows 7. He said he could put Windows 10 on them but they would move so slow it would cause lineups with our precincts and then I would have unhappy voters. So. I would like to get these this fiscal year so we can get them ready to go for the March election. Ms. Denver? Yes, of course. Um, I, I, you, so you're, you are um, recommending the IT right? No. Oh, good. Okay. No, I'm recommending B and H. Okay. Wonderful. What I, what the I memo know. says just for the public is that I received these quotes and I used IT right gave me the first quote and then I based it off of theirs with what I could find computers out there. Um, IT rights does come with an extended warranty. B&H does not at that price. But with that said, these computers are only used for elections. Otherwise they're in storage and I bought those other computers many, many years ago and have never had a problem. Knock on wood. And doesn't IT write, <laughs> don't we have a contract with them? We do have uh, an IT, and they're usually the best price, but in this case, But I mean, they were wouldn't not. they service these if they're, I mean. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. so we yes. would have that, really. But their, their extended agreement was, okay, and an, an election worker drops it, and it busts. Oh. We're not going to get it replaced. We'd have to pay to have oh, it replaced. Yeah. Their yeah. warranty would just replace it. Right. The election worker wouldn't replace it? Just kidding. <laughs> Don't scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'd like to make a motion. But Trudy, that one quick go ahead. comment. And, and just what you said, though, it, the state says you have to do this, but it's really not just so much the state. Um, Microsoft is not going to support the current Correct. platform any longer in the very near future. I think it's only a couple months away, mm -hmm. and that's why everybody has to transition. In fact, I just got a new computer at work because the same issue and we're having to go through everybody to either upgrade them to Windows 10 or get new computers. And like you said, um, these computers that we've got today are so old, they will not support Windows 10. Correct. Correct. Oh, but with that being said, I did have an idea for the old <coughs> ones. What? We could use them up here. Oh. Nancy, we kept you, saying that computers? that was the only yes. problem. You do you use computers? Yes, I do. Okay. That was the only problem with going paperless up here is we didn't couldn't afford the computers. Now I have 17 computers. Good. So if the supervisor drops one, we have some. We have a backup. Actually, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> so we each get two. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. Okay, you made a mo motion. I I'd like to make a motion that we approve the quote I received from B and H for 17 laptop computers at the speci specifications needed at 665 each. Second. Okay, motion is supported by Mr. Steiner. Discussion. Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mr. Clemens. Aye. Ms. Tinnevery. Aye. Mr. Francis. Aye. Mr. Peroni. Aye. And the motion passed. 6-0. Moving on to 8-D, request for approval of the Bedford <coughs> Library tree removal bid. Um, this is something that was pulled off, um, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago um, due to the fact that it wasn't brought here to the township so we could put it out for bid on the website and do it how we do it to where the bids come here. Um, so they did that and it looks like they have uh, a few bids here. Looks like about the same price as the, the original one. Um, so everybody had a chance to look it over. Looks like we have Todd's uh, tree, tree and Crane service at 2,500. Um, Chop out of Grand Rapids, 4,600. Roke tree service, uh, 4,300. So. 
Looks like a no-brainer to me. We got Absolutely. a local guy at half the price. <coughs> so moving on, we're going to look for a motion. <laughs> we got a question. Go I looked at. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, we all have questions. Go ahead. Oh, um, I'm trouble. You know, the request for bids specified that they need to uh, sign <coughs> a disclosure agreement if anybody works for them and also works for us. They didn't present that. The other two bidders did. One was they were supposed to provide proof of insurance. Two did, and this one didn't. They were also supposed to uh, proof of workman's compensation insurance. This one did not. The other two did. Um, The other two uh, prices were stated that they included the removal of the uh, debris when the stumps are ground up. This one said it's extra. So are, are we looking at apples and apples, or, or what is involved in that? Where, where does it say it's extra? Pardon? Where? Where, where are you seeing that the stump removal of the stump is extra? Right on the blacked out thing about three quarters of the way down the page. Oh. It says stump grinding does not include But up here it the does removal. in the item, the sp specifics in the task description, it says um, tree and stump, four trees and stump. Well, that's grinding the stump. It says but one sycamore, one tree, and stump. It. it says one sycamore, one tree, and stump, seven fifty. Two sycamore, four trees, and stumps, seventeen fifty. Well, but the, the grinding up stumps stump they could use is not include the removal of stumps. The removal of stump chips. Yeah. yeah this, what this you ground up. up. Yeah. The maintenance guys can remove. We them. can remove those. I mean, it's not a big deal. But yeah, you're right, Paul. That's typically, typically people leave those, but. You know, I don't think it's a big, I don't think that's a big deal because our guys could do that if they needed to, but the insurance items to me are a big deal and maybe we can just solve it by, you know, approving if that's the one that uh, preferred that, that price and it's a couple thousand dollars savings, why wouldn't it be? Says maybe we could just make it contingent on him, him providing proof of insurance and proof of workman's yeah, compensation. Because it says here he's fully licensed and insured. Right. Right on his quote. The yeah. RFP asked for <clears throat> proof of that. Doesn't mean you're paid up. Right. And you yeah. can put anything you want on a piece of paper. Say, oh, yeah, we're licensed and covered. Um, we so could put that in the motion. We could make mm -hmm. it as a, as a... Mr. Steiner. And just real quick, too. I mean, uh, Paul, you said that... Um, that the second one, CHOP, also provided. I didn't, at least it's not in my packet, I don't have a copy of any insurance or workers' comp on all I see is the familial disclosure uh, from CHOP. I don't see anything else from them either. That's correct. The only thing I saw that was for the last one, which is Roke. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm suspicious of some some company that'll come all the way from Grand Rapids, Michigan, that's three hour drive. Um, to cut up a few trees. Strange. At that price, it's probably worth it <laughs> for a day's worth well, of work. Well, that's why, why would you? Could always make a motion contingent on them making a proof, you know, show proof of it. Are we ready? I make that go motion ahead. if we're ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the bid from Todd's Tree and Crane Service in the amount of $2,500 with the provider that that company provides us proof of insurance and proof of workman's comp insurance okay. as requested in the uh, request for bids. Second for discussion. Motion in support of a Mr. Steiner discussion. Mr. Steiner. Um, just a quick question. I, I did note, see on the proposal from Todd's Tree and Crane, they did mention if we wanted to add that uh, another tree, is that tree suspect to needing to be destroyed? Um, that was line item number three on the sheet, and he said if you wanted to do that, it was an additional 500. Is, I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning, I mean, is, is the tree dying back there, or? 
Um, I mean, we can just approve the 2,500, and if the, another tree needs to be removed, I mean, we can. Because he'd still be that at that point, he'd still be cheaper than yeah. the other two, and that's adding another tree. I could take a look at it, or go there with Pat, or go talk to Jody. Well, if we approve this amount and we find out that another tree is needed, why that's a separate bill. That's fine. We vote on that too. Well, but we don't have to because it's five hundred. Right. But you'd want to do it at the same time. Yeah. We'll look into it. Should should the disclosure be filled out too? Because that was part of the bid too. Yeah, I would say. Mm-hmm. So if that could be part of the motion too. Friendly amendment for that. Familial disclosure. You go with that, Paul? Absolutely. <clears throat> okay, could you call the roll, please? Mr. Francis? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Ms. Tinneberry? Aye. Hershberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. The motion passed 6 0. Item 8 e request for approval of the increase in the cost for the Lewis Avenue streetscaping and concrete sidewalk project. Mr. Bushman, you've waited a long time. Appreciate you being here. Sure, Barry Bushman, Mannequin Smith Group. Uh, as a just an aside, I believe uh, Chomp is the company that the Road Commission hired to do all their tree removal. That's probably why you got a bid from them. Oh, so how did they get paid for that? So, anyways, uh, yes, um, we did open or the state opened bids for the Lewis Avenue Chap Grant and Streetscape project. Uh, we received one bidder. Uh, JB contractor out of Detroit. Uh, the bid came in at $453,615.95. Our grant amount uh, was $378,380. How that broke down was $258,380 from SEMCOG and $120,000 from Bedford. That left a difference of $75,235.95, uh, which is roughly 20% over the uh, total grant amount. Um, we had uh, debated whether to accept the bid because there was actually only one bidder that uh, had supplied a bid. And after investigating a little further, it was realized that the state, uh, MDOT, had a decided on their own unilaterally that they would put this program through the SBC which is a small business program and uh, so it didn't go out op to open bids uh, and was selected for just a small business program now generally speaking we're seeing a lot of bids coming in at 15 plus percent over this year that's just what we're seeing in the asphalt industry and the concrete industry and construction in general it's uh, Every day, it seems like the prices are coming in very high. So we looked at some of the unit prices, and, and um, SEMCOG actually came back to us and said, look, we're interested in seeing this project go forward. We will provide the extra $51,000 and change, uh, which is their match is roughly 68.3%. So they said, we'll be glad to match that if the township will decide to put forward their extra $23,857, $23,857.32, um, which is a, approximately a 20% increase over and above your 120000 It seemed like a reasonable request. It would get the work done. We did a little investigation on JB Contracting. They are a smaller contractor out of Detroit. They do about half a million dollars worth of work. They seem to have a nice website and appears that they have done a uh, decent work. Um, looks like a DBE disadvantaged business enterprise. Uh, so I guess at this point we would recommend that uh, given the fact that uh, SEMCOG is willing to come forward with their money and the project's all teed up ready to go to construction and the fact that most other bids are coming in 15 to 20 percent over bid today uh, we would suggest that it's probably worth our while to go forward with it rather than to rebid it, which I think next year we might even see higher bids. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I think at this point uh, the best thing we could do is suggest we move forward and, and uh, pay the extra money and, and uh, go forward and recommend we select the bid. We will have to go to MDOT 
put forward our recommendation, provide justification, and it'll go for the ad board uh, up at the state. So, Mary, I was talking to Ms. Tenneberry earlier this week about this, um, and she had suggested had we looked into doing this without MDOT on our own with our streetscape money. Do you, do you think we could have done this project on our own with local contractors for less money than what we're matching? Well, it's a $450,000 project. I mean, SEMCOG is now going to be putting in $310,000. There's no way you could have done I'm just saying the question work. was brought up, so no, I thought, I mean, you know. There's no way you could have done that volume of work for that um, for what we're putting into it, which would be $143,000. Are you saying that if we didn't go through MDOT, we would lose the funding? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's only through, it has to go through SEMCOG. <coughs> SEMCOG provides a fund, no. has to go to MDOT for that, the that wasn't, bid that, process. That wasn't the question, though, Paul. The question from Nancy was, is do away with the whole project, what we've done with the grant, MDOT, and just take the money on our own and go forward with the project. Could we have done it cheaper? Is what? Can Nancy say what she said? Yeah. Okay, that's probably better. Thank you. My whole thing, and you know I've said this before, uh, every grant isn't a grant that you want to accept. I mean, so sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I think $453,000 for painting, it's, it's, no, it's no asphalt. Painting the street, painting a uh, bike, and again, I know I'm being kind of silly and facetious, but sidewalks, I mean, I, I just think that's outrageous. So my question to Mr. Peroni was, did we ever think about hiring, you know, the, our own striping done, our own, I know we wouldn't be, you know, that this thing that the Road Commission has agreed to in terms of, um, you know, the, the ongoing maintenance of it, putting in sidewalks. We've put sidewalks all over the Lambertville and Samaria and, and certainly wasn't a cost of that. So my question to him was, could we have hired local people to do the striping, the sidewalks, and come out um, better than having to get this TAP grant? So that was the reason that I brought it up. He, he um, convinced me that, that uh, the TAP grant was necessary, so Oh, well, partially convinced me. It's hard to convince me totally. That's Bob. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, so my, but but, my, but the, the thing of it is, when you agree to something, to agree to accept this grant, and then they change it. I, I understand the bid process, but they they put the constraints on who was going to bid it. But we didn't know that when we accepted the grant. You just said it was through the SBP. We didn't mm -hmm. know that. So I guess government, you know, you, you it's like the, the, the thing where you put the ball under the cups and you move it around and then comes up. Shell game. Shell uh, game, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure in, in MDOT's eyes, they choose projects of this magnitude. They have so many multi-million dollar projects these days, and uh, they probably look for for these DBE small business projects that are under a million and that sort of thing, right. and we fell into that category, and that's why we 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 got selected. Well, um, I think I think that's what the public needs to know too, though. Is you know I got a, a few calls when the DDA project was being done with with that. I believe that was the grant money uh, finishing up. Hey, why didn't we have a chance to bid on that? Well, M dot, you have to be M dot certified, you know, and they typically do the bid. You know what I'm saying? So that a lot of people aren't. I'm not certified, so they don't really get the opportunity to bid these local projects. That's correct. Yes, obviously, um, on the ones that often get the grant, then we have to go through the MDOT bidding process. We have no other choice but to, to use them. Um, one other thing, too, there are some, obviously, I don't want to oversimplify the project because there is sidewalk, but there is um, you know, a lot of work at the intersections for improvements there. There's new pedestrian signals and the like, too. So it's a multifaceted project, not just and some sidewalks and streets. And the pedestrian signals are much, the pedestrian <laughs> signals are much needed, too. People have issues there every day. Okay, so um, 
this project, I, I, we, we have seen the layout before, correct? We have yep. seen the drawing. It goes from basically car park down to the... Ivor Lindsay. Approximately, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it better as scoops, but Ivor oh. Lindsay is about <laughs> the same place. <laughs> Yep. Um, so, it, it um, how many feet? I mean, yards or mi it's not a mile, it's not uh, even a half mile, is it? Oh, it's probably close. close and, and just feet. so everybody knows, you're going to see a gap in the sidewalk. We had one resident that wasn't willing to sign and give us a waiver on the sidewalk close to scoops. So you're going to see a yard with no sidewalk. So, but you're leaving the grass. Well, yeah, we can't touch it. Okay. Okay. Well, then, my did did the road commission drop the document? Because you mentioned that you didn't draw it up. They but they provided the the backbone of the document, what they wanted to see. Yes, I didn't draft that document. So, but if you care to have an extra signature added to it, there, we will add that to it's make sure it gets added. It's absolutely imperative. If the attorney were here, he would tell you that. For board approval, things have to have the clerk and the supervisor sign. I figured I'd save us money tonight, leave the legal team Yeah, I'm at glad home. you saved us money, but please understand that you can't sign documents all by yourself. Oh, I know. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Sure. Okay, I look, any more comments or questions? Barry, do you think there's any way that we could do this on our own for $150,000? Absolutely not. Bingo. There's the answer. Because if we went on our own, if we wanted the same scope of work done, you know, we've, we've uh, uh, talked about putting 120 in from the Metro Act funds mm -hmm. plus this additional uh, 23 something, so you know, 143,000 dollar total. So use 150. It, it, there just isn't any way we can get this done if we did it on our own. If it were just sidewalks, it'd be one thing. The intersections costing the majority of the money. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're seeing Sunoco's corner, Maggie's, and the church's corner being basically rebuilt and having benches and, you know, kind of mirroring the bank's corner. I mean, that's your your bulk of your cost. So, okay. Look for a motion. Too. Keep in mind we have two separate motions for two different papers here. So, is the motion you're seeking to approve the additional twenty three eight fifty seven? That's the first only. One. Yes. That's the first one. Okay. Yes, sir. I move that we uh, approve that change order, if you will, to increase our cost by twenty three thousand eight hundred fifty seven dollars and thirty two cents, combined with the hundred and twenty we spoke earlier on. From Metro Act, so our contribution would be 143,857.32 for the whole project. To support. Motion in support of Mr. Clements. Discussion, Ms. Tinnevery? So um, we talked about this earlier about the budget amendment before we approve. I'll go along with approving it as long as the budget amendment is on next the next board meeting, which is the first meeting in July. Is that sufficient or not? Hey, you asked me if it can be done, yes. No. I mean, yeah, I want I want to make sure it's done because what, you know, mm -hmm. don't wait till 2020 and we're approving the budget amendment for tonight. Okay. Could you call the roll, please? Mr. Francis? Aye. Mr. Clemens? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Tinnevery? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye. The motion passed 6 0. Look for a motion on the next item. What are we going to call this? Yeah. Agreement for improvement entered into with the Road Commission. That first sentence. Barry, do you have any suggestions? Let's call it maintenance agreement. I'm fine with that. Ms. Tinnevery? Begrudgingly, I move that we approve the maintenance agreement with the Monroe County Road Commission 
for uh, improvement in downtown temperance as presented and that the document be altered so that the supervisor and clerk will be signing on behalf of the board. Support. Motion supported by Mr. Clements. Discussion? Seeing none, could you call the roll, please? Ms. Tinnevery? Aye. Mr. Clements? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mr. Francis? Aye. Hirschberger votes aye. Mr. Peroni? Aye, and the motion passed 6 0. Thank you, Thank Barry. You. Appreciate it. Barry, do you have kind of an idea, um, a completion projection of the project? Here. Sorry, they're going to yell at me. I I don't have the actual contract document with me tonight. I believe we put a end of October completion date. Normally, we open the window quite a bit for the contractor. Obviously, during the award process, we have to have a pre-construction meeting. The contractor will provide us an actual schedule of work when he's anticipating doing the work. But normally. Um, it's before the num November close, you know, when shutdown occurs, normal shutdown occurs. Can you have it done before August 24th? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Well, just so you know, the street might be shut down August 24th, so uh, you might want to communicate that to the we contractor. Will. We will be having the pre-construction meeting, and, okay. and those any, any dates, critical dates, will need to be provided to them so they're okay. aware of dates they can't work. Ms. Tinnevery? Well, um... Having said what you just said, I'm concerned that is there a penalty if they don't meet the deadline like there is with road projects? And sure, absolutely. Okay, because I would hate to see sidewalks dug up for the winter and no concrete. No, no, they're, they're, it's a completion date okay. this year, yes. Okay. Okay, number nine, comments from the public. Comments limited to five minutes. Come on up. Good evening again, Logan Tisdale. This is in regards to information, Bedford Fire Department monthly report. I see that Chief Massingill is here to answer any questions. This is in regards to Monroe County Sheriff contract summary. I see there's nobody here to answer any questions, so I'll take it upon myself to enlighten the board. It took 10 contract officers 15.77 hours to write one traffic citation for the month of May 2019. One officer wrote 14 traffic citations for 45 hours on patrol. Another wrote 14 traffic citations for 66.5 hours on patrol. Another officer wrote eight tickets for 37.5 hours on patrol. Together, those three officers wrote 36 traffic citations for 149 hours on patrol. That is one traffic citation for 4.13 hours. Remember, it took them together 15.77 hours. Total citations for the month by contract officers was 48. There were 43 accidents in May this year. That means that the other seven officers wrote 12 citations amongst themselves. One officer went 88.75 hours on patrol, not one single traffic citation. Another one went 89.75 hours on patrol, not one single traffic citation. <laughs> Another went 81 hours on patrol, not one single traffic citation. These are contract hours by contract officers. That means those three officers strictly on patrol went 259.5 hours on patrol without one single traffic citation. Those three officers together investigated eight traffic citations and not one traffic citation was issued. That means that of these eight accidents, not one was caused by someone violating our traffic laws. Why no enforcement action? Eight acts of God, eight car deer accidents or what? Same old, same old. I would not be so insistent to this, to this board if something, if there was some resemblance of actual traffic enforcement in this township. That apparently will never happen. Well, some contract officers are trying to show that there are traffic violations in this uh, township, others are not. If you went to the Michigan-Ohio State game, do you think you could find a uh, Michigan fan in the big house? Well, as easy as that would be, I think it's just as easy to go out here and find traffic citations. I've had people tell me they see violations all the time. Nobody does anything. These numbers are not acceptable. It's been that way since I've been here for over two plus years. You can't go 259.5 hours on patrol in Bedford Township in a marked unit with a radar and not see somebody violating the law. So what are these three guys doing? You've got three guys that are actually doing something 
they're writing some traffic citations. One guy, he's pretty consistent doing it. So obviously there's traffic citations out here. The other three guys, they're riding around, what are they doing for 259.5 hours? Translate that into one guy working a 40 hour week. Divide 40 into 259. That'll tell you how many weeks somebody could ride around here in a mock patrol car and not see one single traffic citation and not investigate one uh, complaint. It's impossible. <laughs> It's absolutely impossible, but Bedford contract people in the Monroe County Sheriff's Department could absolutely do that. It's astounding to me. I, I, it, it's like it's mind-boggling. Maybe the people that don't know much about police work, this is okay. But the people that know something about police work, it's appalling. And I know a little bit about police work. I worked traffic for three years. It's impossible to go out there with a radar and not find a traffic citation in Bedford Township. Go on Lewis Avenue. I can almost clock them with my eyeball and tell you how fast they're going. They come across that state line at 50 miles an hour, 55 miles an hour. It's 40 miles an hour in Ohio on Lewis Avenue. Before you get to the state line, it's 40. They're doing 55 before they even get to the state line. They blow by me like I'm, like, like I'm not even there. But nobody does anything. If you have to do something, you need to tell these people that we're having accidents every month, 45 to 50 accidents a month, because nobody's taking enforcement action. These are people you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to. <laughs> I would think you'd be concerned about that. If it makes me upset, I want to make you upset. I'm just Joe uh, JQ Citizen out here. But this is not acceptable, and you know it's not acceptable. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any more comments? Ken Gagne, 8311 Lambert Street, Lambertville, Michigan. I'm going to follow Logan there a little bit. I spend a lot of time on CCOR. And 151 going through Samaria. There's a railroad <coughs> sign going west that says 15 mile an hour. Picture of the railroad track. It's within 250, 300 feet from the railroad track. I don't know how many tickets are in a book, but I bet I could write a half a book every day right there by the railroad tracks on 151. Trucks, placard signs on, right across the railroad track. You got a placard sign on, the last I knew, it was like a $5,000 fine for not stopping for a railroad track. There's a whole bunch of tickets down there. I met a water truck the other day, probably doing 50 mile an hour, 250 feet from the railroad track. I called the owner. Come to find out, it was the owner's son. He said, I will have a talk with him. Now to get on to the positive point, I want to give Malt King a lot of credit. It's been years that I tried to get that intersection mowed before the holidays. Mulch King, Friday before Memorial Day, he mowed it with a lawnmower. It looked excellent. Right up along Telegraph, right down along Smith. And he's cleaned up the wood pile. He's, he's, he's doing a good job there now. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any more comments from the public? Seeing none. Board members' comments? Ms. Tannerberry? Well, I just want to clear up your misinformation. I did make, a, or somebody made one for me, a Facebook page back in 2016 when I was running for office because I did not put up any yard signs. I don't believe in yard signs. And then I, you, you can... If I, I deleted it, if it's still there, that's not that's Facebook for one. And two, if you see any posts, I, I don't post, there's no posts on there, recent or whatever, there's no posts on your Bedford page, there's no posts on your outlandish crazy page, whatever that is. People tell me that they there's wild that's an terrible page. Excuse me, I'm talking. When you get to talking, you can talk about that. But that's I, I just listen to the rumors. I'm just saying. So wh why you want people to think I have a Facebook page, I don't know. But I do not have a Facebook page. So don't Facebook me because I don't have a Facebook page. If it's there, it's not my fault. And that's part of why I don't get into social media. And then mm, that's it. Just wanted to clarify that. <coughs> But you had the last word, so <coughs> what people say is the last word is what people believe. So whatever you want Nancy, to say is fine. I'm just giving you a hard time, I'm Nancy. When you, did you get so it, sensitive? Just 
A you know ago. I love you, Nancy. Just, a read, just ago. come on, come on, <laughs> Mr. Clemens. <laughs> on a lighter note. Uh, this Friday is the fireworks. The park board will be putting on at the high school. Want to make sure everybody knows to come at dusk. Um, if they were to be rained out, weather, um, hopefully not permitting, would be the 22nd of Saturday. Um, we'll have the uh, high school band orchestra and uh, band boosters with the concession stands. We have uh, four food trucks. So uh, to me, this event is one of the kind of signature events that makes Bedford Bedford. So I would encourage everybody to make sure you come out. Uh, bring your family and have a good time. Other than that, I have nothing, Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Steiner. Um, just a quick uh, note that anyone that subscribes to Buckeye uh, Broadband, Buckeye Cable, Buckeye Email, whatever you want to call all their different names, um, I called them today because I had an email. It looks authentic as all get out, and I don't get fooled by phishing and, and hacking and all that kind of stuff. But it did look extremely authentic and it said that your uh, payment information on file uh, has declined your current payment. And of course it's got you know the Buckeye link it looks like in the middle of it and it's got the Buckeye broadband logo all that stuff. So I call Buckeye and they said, well, we've had some phishing going on so, and, and spam. So I, I hit forward on it to take a look at it. And I said, well, you're absolutely right because it showed it was some strange name and then it said at Bex.net. It was not from Buckeye. You can tell that. So I sent that to them. Their uh, email address to, to send that type of uh, emails to, it's just abuse at uh, Bex.net. So if you get anything like that, forward that to them because I went back again a couple hours later um, after I made the phone call and there was another one that came and it, it was another bogus email address. It wasn't even the same one. But you don't notice that until, because sometimes you can't tell the email address until you go to forward it and then you'll, you'll show what their email was in that string. So be very careful. In general, you don't even forward. A lot of times you just copy the email and paste it in as a, a like an attachment. Um, but sometimes you can't always do that with webmail. So be very careful on that. And again, if you have any issues like that, uh, report that to Buckeye and send that email to abuse at Bex.net. Ms. Hershberger? Uh, the newsletter went out. I'm sure most people have it. Talks about the mosquito dunks. They're still available to Bedford residents only. Just bring in your photo ID and you can get those. And then we also put in there a list of phone numbers so that people would have the um, direct numbers when they uh, want to get a hold of a certain department. And with that in mind, if there is a disruption in phone service this Friday, the phones are being switched over to the new ones that this board approved. So there may be a little disruption if you're trying to get a hold hold of someone in the township, but it'll be brief. Just try again. And that's all I have. Mr. Francis. <clears throat> On a lighter note, <clears throat> the uh, real estate tax bills for summer have been printed and they are scheduled to be mailed out around the 1st of July. I'm sure everybody thinks that's something they just can't live without, but that's the schedule. It was announced in the, uh, the newsletter that it was published. Just wanted to make people aware of that, so they'll get a little message in the or an envelope in the mail. For that. Uh, I too, what TC said, our, our fireworks that we have are from when you talk to people. They're some of the best in the county, the best around. Um, we've had the same company for a long time, Pyrotechnics. They do an amazing job. Um, we have great staff over there. The fire department sets up shop over there, and it's a great event. And the park board works very hard to make it the event great every year. So. I encourage everybody to come on out and um, come to the t come to the actual stadium. I mean, you, when you get that close to them, because a lot of the fireworks are low. Um, so, but it's a it's a great event. And if I can uh, encourage everybody, you know, to do your best to take your trash with you, because the park board does clean it up um, that Saturday, and it's a lot of work for them. Um, I'm going to be partnering with them this year on that to, to make it easier. So. Um, but yeah, that would help very much. Uh, next is the uh, 
the recycling event um, for the uh, kind of a cleanup June 20th um, the, from 3 to 7. Uh, this event accepts pesticides, fertilizers, automotive fluids, cleaning products, paints, flammable items, batteries, mercury-containing items, fluorescent bulbs, and, sh and sharps and securely sealed hard containers. Uh, and that's strictly in force. Uh, no business waste, empty containers, appliances, ammunition, garbage, debris, or radioactive materials will be accepted. So this is a great event to kind of clean out the garage of things that have been sitting around. Uh, that is June 20th behind Township Hall from 3 to 7. Uh, I wanted to bring to your attention to um, this Friday we're having our second annual uh, business summit. Um, former uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Brian Kelly will be speaking. Um, he's uh, right now he's under the Small Business Association president um, and uh, I'll be giving a township update. Um, that's Friday June 21st uh, from 1130 to 1 and lunch will be provided for people that sign up. Um, 734 Smokehouse, Howard Meats, Subway, Forest View Lanes, and Food Town will be providing food, so we appreciate them. So if you haven't signed up for that and you'd like to get a little update, I recommend coming. Um, really quick, with the uh, we had uh, Michigan Week, um, which is a, really a cool time of the year. Um, we're really one of the only counties, I think, Mr. Clemens, in the state that still does Michigan Week. And um, we had some amazing people that got awards this year. And I just, uh, for Michigan Minuteman Award, Craig Lamb, uh, Alfred Pryor, uh, Corey Meggett, Sherry Nyhan, and Tom Zogabe got Michigan Minuteman Awards. Uh, Community Leadership Award was Dr. Carl Schultz. Um, he's doing an amazing job at the school, amazing things for the school system, and we appreciate him for that. Uh, Golden Heart Award was Tammy Lamb. Um, Quality of Life Award was Gail King for Adopt a Road. She does a lot of amazing things with Adopt a Road, and we appreciate that. And then the Youth Minute Man was Nick Huss. What an uh, amazing young man. His uh, information, I'll leave this if anybody wants to read about it, but he's uh, got a bright future ahead of him. Um, and then I wanted to um, let everybody know we have these uh, pamphlets right here for uh, Gr Greater Toledo Bike User. They're actually maps um, that cover our area in Monroe County so we have a lot of these maps if you are a biker and you want to kind of figure out some of the bike maps and then these uh, pamphlets right here are really really neat pamphlets that we got um, and they're for people basically that are 55 and old, older what you should know and it's kind of a neat little book that gives a lot of information in that so these are both in the supervisor's office and the ordinance office so and then um, we will be putting the capital improvement to plan together. We've already started on it. Like I said, we've been working with Dennis Kohler to find out our needs here, kind of the age of things. It's not something I just want to throw together. I've gotten quotes on uh, roofs from uh, two different companies. Metal roof I got a quote on, and then I got a quote for a standard roof. Um, so um, I did want to say um, I'm getting inundated with calls with drainage, and everybody knows why we've had a record uh, amount of rain. Um, but just bear with the road commission. I think there are 400 calls in the rears um, with actual jobs that they have to go on. So um, they've been in Bedford almost every day for the last three weeks. So they're definitely getting our uh, fair share. I was at your house today, Marge, and I could talk to you a little bit more about that. But um, uh, Temperance Street Fest, August 24th. Uh, that's look, shaping up to be a great event. I hope to see the community come together. If you're interested in the event, contact uh, uh, Kristen Nussbaum with Barron Insurance, uh, they're kind of overseeing that. Um, and then uh, if you haven't read the MTA Update magazine, it's a really good read. It kind of talks about Pittsfield Township, what they did 10 years ago in the recession with really um, their master plan and putting uh, bike plant paths and bike routes together. Uh, this is something we hear about all the time, and we're doing it in Lambertville. I mean, they're creating you know, routes to connect the neighborhood, so I think we always need to be uh, cognizant of that when we do road projects of how can we incorporate that because people want it so other than that Mr. Tenevario you know I did see you on Facebook but I, I apologize if you're not on there I will let that slide you didn't see you me. should get on there and delete it you didn't see me I did delete it just so everybody knows Nancy and I get along very well we have actually we have a really good working relationship we just don't show it on camera very well <laughs> um I just want to say something about the drainage. You know, the residents can do a lot to keep their um, ditches mowed and then rake out the, the, the grass and the leaves 
keep the culverts or the under the driveway culvert um, free because a, a lot of the road commission's problems have to do with mismanagement uh, by the homeowner so and talk to your neighbors don't burn in the ditches because it builds up residue and then it, it hampers the drainage there's a lot that we could do and I mean I understand that we've had a lot of rain and there's a lot of standing water on the flat areas too but it, you know in the future I think that you know we can do a lot to help them so that they're uh, when they're doing their job they're doing what needs to be done by the road commission and not what should be done by the homeowner well, and to the people that called me to go out to Dollar General to remove the uh, uh, grade, not the grading, but the mesh that goes underneath the grading, uh, they called the road commission to go out there, and they, they haven't gone out there, so I told them I'd just go out there myself. Well, I couldn't get the grade, grade off. It was stuck, so <laughs> that's why it's not that. But we did poke holes in it, so it actually is draining a little bit. So I thought so, I'd go out there and do it. I so, Mr. It Peroni, with that said, <laughs> too, I'm going to add to the drainage because I had an issue, which I emailed all of you on uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I talked to Mr. Bushman, and there is a person that is in charge of soil erosion uh, up at the Drain Commission. And if they have an issue, especially in an area where there's you know newer construction going on and things like that, call up there, ask for the young lady that works, I can't remember her name, but she works in the soil erosion control. And according to Mr. Bushman, she's very good, and she gets on top of these people. And I think some of the issue where, where I went out and investigated, uh, there was some of the silt covers uh, that was causing uh -huh. part of the problem because the silt cover got filled up and then nothing could filter through the silt covers. Uh -huh. So uh, just so anybody has that problem, they can call the Drain Commission and, and get to that department. Okay. We stand adjourned. Somebody needs to ask the